In this video, I'm going to look at something called the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem tells us that if you have a polynomial, p at x, that should be a p, so this is any polynomial, and you divide that polynomial by a linear polynomial, x minus a, so notice the coefficient is 1, so just a linear polynomial with a leading coefficient of 1, then the remainder is that polynomial div, uh, evaluated at the number a. Um, it might help to see an example to see exactly what this theorem is saying, if you're not completely clear with what we're say saying here. So let's take an example. p at x is equal to 2x cubed uh, plus 6x plus, no, sorry, uh, 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5, and we're going to divide that, uh, divide by a linear polynomial, so x minus, let's go with 1, let's keep it simple. Okay, so we want to figure out what the remainder is. That's what our um, theorem tells us about the remainder. So let's divide this to figure out what the remainder is. So x minus 1 divides 2x cubed uh, plus 4x squared. I don't have an x term, so we've got to put in a 0x plus 5. So now what multiplies x to give you 2x cubed? And the answer would be 2x squared. 2x squared times x, obviously 2x cubed, we just said that. 2x squared times minus 1, minus 2x squared. Now we're going to subtract. Subtract these, you get 0. Subtract these, you get 6x squared. Bring down the next term, plus 0x. What times x gives us 6x squared? So the answer there would be 6x. 6x times x. 6x squared. 6x times negative 1. Negative 6x. Subtract these, you get 0. Subtract these, you get 6x. Bring down the next term. Positive 5. So what times x gives you 6x? That would be positive 6. So 6 times x is 6x. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Subtract these terms, you get 0. Subtract these terms, you get positive 11. This would be your remainder. So your remainder is 11. Okay, let's go back to the theorem. The theorem told us that if p at x is a polynomial divided by x minus a, then the remainder is p at a. Well, we know the remainder is 11. So what the theorem is telling us is that we could also get the remainder by evaluating the function at a. Well, what is a? a is this number here. a is equal to 1. You might be saying, well, isn't it negative 1? Well, no, because if you look over here, it's x minus a, and what are we subtracting? We're subtracting 1, which is a. If it had been plus a, then we would be subtracting a negative 1, which would give us the positive. So in this case, we're subtracting a, a positive number. Right? We're subtracting a positive 1. So the theorem tells us, um, so by the theorem, it should be the case that this happens, that if we evaluate our function at a, which is 1, we should get the remainder of 11. Well, let's just check that that's right. p at 1, if I substituted 1 into p, I would get 2 times 1 to the power of 3 plus 4 times 1 squared plus 5. So that's 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 5, or 2 plus 4 plus 5, which is 11, which is what we said we should have got. So the remainder is exactly 
the function evaluated that value a. And sort of it, I mean that that's not a surprise. I mean that's what the theorem told us. Um, when you when you initially look at this, it might seem a little bit like odd, like why should that happen? If you evaluate the function at this number, why are you getting the remainder? Um, but the fact that it's a theorem tells us that it should always be true. Well, let's prove it to see why it's always true. Okay, so our proof, we're going to need a, a function, so let p at x be our polynomial, be a polynomial, with the remainder r when you divide it by some linear factor, or some linear polynomial, when divided by x minus a. So what this means, you know, I'll just do this off to the side, if you were to put p at x into your division statement, and divide it by x minus a, and you do your long division, da 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 da, you're going to get some quotient up here, q at x, and then some remainder. Correct? I mean, that's just long division. I mean, I didn't put actual numbers in, but that's what would happen. Your q at x would be your, your uh, quotient, your r would be your remainder, your p at x would be your uh, dividend and your x minus a is your divisor. Um, so let's just write our division statement, or not not our full division statement, but let's write it like this. Remember that means that p at x is equal to q at x times x minus a, so x minus a times q at x plus your remainder. This is basically a division statement. If this is what you get, and this will always be true. Well, now let's just evaluate p at a. So if I put a in for x, what I'm going to get is, I'm going to sub in a here, so I'll have a minus a times q at a plus r. Well, a minus a is 0 times q at a plus r. I don't care what q at a is. Whatever it is, if I multiply it by 0, I'm going to get 0. So that's 0 plus r, which is r, which means p at a is equal to r, which is exactly what we wanted to prove, right? That the remainder was equal to the function evaluated at r, which means we have proved our theorem, that p at a must be equal to r. Okay, so that's the remainder theorem proved. Uh, let's just see how this would help us out. Let's say we wanted to um, find a remainder of a polynomial divided by something else. So what is the remainder when p at x equals 5x to the 4 plus 3x cubed minus 10x squared plus x minus 4 is divided by x plus 1. So before we had the remainder theorem, the only way to do this question would be to do the long division and get the remainder. Well, now we don't have to do that much work. All we have to do is figure out what is a. a, in this case, is what number are you subtracting here? Well, we're not subtracting a number, we're adding a number. So if you want to make a, a subtraction into addition, you have to subtract the negative number. So a would be negative 1, right? We're subtracting negative 1, which is really like adding 1. So in order to get the remainder, all I need to evaluate is p at negative 1. So if I stick in negative 1 into this polynomial, 5 times negative 1 to the power of 4, plus 3 times negative 1 to the power of 3, minus 10 times negative 1 squared, plus negative 1, minus 4, 
evaluate this. So that would be 5 times negative 1 to the power of 4 is positive 1, plus 3, negative 1 to the power of negative 3 is negative 1, minus 10 times negative 1 squared is a positive, minus 1, oops, minus 4. So we're going to have 5, minus 3, minus 10, minus 1, minus 4, which will equal negative uh, 13. So therefore, by the remainder theorem, the remainder, the remainder will be negative 13. So hopefully you can see that this is a much quicker way of actually finding the remainder, right? We wouldn't want to have to, you know, evaluating a function at a, value, at a negative 1 is a lot easier than performing long division. Um, so one thing the remainder theorem is going to do is help us find these remainders much quicker, and you'll see in the next video when we talk about something called the factor theorem, how this is much, much how this is useful, how this is going to help us when uh, factoring polynomials.